Welcome back, fellow explorers, to another episode of our speculative evolution journey. Today, we dive back into the oceans and rivers of Verdantara to see how life has been evolving since the Pyronova eruption. In the aftermath of the Pyronova eruption the ocean ecosystems are left shattered, but as the dust begins to settle life quickly rebounds. The anoxic event wiped out most planktons, pushing the aqualithrax to the brink of extinction. But as plankton numbers begin to rebound so do the aqualithrax, they further specialize for filter feeding and evolve a feeding structure very similar to the extinct abyssothrax. This newly acquired feeding arrangement enables these forms, which we'll call the erythrax, to reach unprecedented sizes, growing up to an impressive 6 meters in length, with their lifespan extending up to 17 years. As larger and larger prey evolves the exophorans evolve with them. These forms will be much larger with a more streamlined and muscular body, they will also adopt thuniform swimming as their main form of locomotion. Thuniform swimming is when most all propulsion is supplied by the tail fin. This form of swimming is typically seen in many large ocean predators such as sharks. These adaptations will allow these macro predators, which we'll call the exogrians, to dominate the oceans as the top predator, growing up to 5 meters long and living up to 10 years. As we surface from the oceans for now, we find ourselves on the shores of Xeracor. Here descendants of the planopard have adapted to a semi-aquatic lifestyle. The term semi-aquatic is quite hard to define because it can range from animals that spend very little time in the water to animals that spend almost their entire lives in the water. Regardless these creatures have evolved much longer legs aiding them in traversing Xeracor's many swamps and rivers. Their shell has become flat, mimicking the color of the chromocyanates. We will discuss mimicry in much greater detail in a future episode. When these creatures feel threatened, they will duck below the surface, leaving only their shells exposed. We'll call these clever creatures the stecopard. They can grow up to 4 feet tall living for up to 11 years. An offshoot of the stecopard may evolve for life in the ocean. These creatures would behave in a similar manner to seals and sea lions. They are equipped with wide flat feet to propel themselves through the water. Notably, their once rigid shells have undergone a transformation, now boasting a softer and more gelatinous composition. These unique forms will be called the lycopods, they can grow up to 3 feet and life for up to 7 years. These are the first of many semi-aquatic creatures to come. As the oceans continue to rebound, we cross the seas to find ourselves on the continent of Xyranthia. Here semi-aquatic life may also emerge. The dentropod mainly inhabit the steppe, but they can also be found in gallery forests which are small patches of forests surrounding rivers or lakes. This means that in order to reach new feeding grounds, these dentropod may have to cross bodies of water, and over time they may adapt to more effectively traverse the water. Once they have adapted to swim some may take advantage of the mostly untapped food source that is the freshwater vegetation. Their head crests may shrink as well as their overall body size. These forms may become overly reliant on their front limbs with the back pair of legs becoming less powerful. We will call these semi-aquatic megafauna the limnotheriopods. They grow up to 7 feet tall and 10 feet long. Living for up to 17 years. Another clade that might specialize for a semi-aquatic lifestyle is the anaropods. These forms have remained largely unchanged since their conception and have remained in the trees of the swamps and marshes. However similarly to the limnotheriopods these creatures may have to cross bodies of water to reach new feeding grounds. And as these forms evolve to spend more time at ground level, they may fully abandon the trees. They may adopt a form of swimming similar to snakes and eels. As they evolve to swim more effectively, they may expand their diet to feed on the aquatic vegetation and any other small creatures. We will call these forms the Dracotopod, they can grow up to 2 feet long and live for up to 6 years. Finally we arrive at the continent of Xyrophilios where something remarkable is about to transpire. Similarly, to the Limnotheriopods descendants of the Cyropodia evolve to become semi-aquatic megafauna. Their tails broaden becoming reminiscent of the beaver tails on Earth. 
their toes split, with webbing in between them. One pair of eyes relocates to the top of their heads to see over the water line. We will call these forms the colodopards, they can grow up to 5 feet long and live for up to 14 years. As the colodopard begin to populate Xyrophilio's waterways a new predator evolves to hunt them. Descendants of the Cintodonts, these new forms adapt to become ambush predators. They swim similarly to the Dracotopods, with a long slender body. Their jaws have become extremely developed and the crushing teeth used by ancestors to crush bone are now used to grab prey. Their body is quite similar to that of crocodilians, which are the most successful ambush predators on Earth. We will call these lurking predators the Alethopods. They can grow up to 7 feet long and live for up to 15 years. Similarly, to the Lycopods a branch of the Colodopard may specialize for oceanic life. With wider feet and a broader tail they swiftly move through the water, only coming onto land to breed, rest, and lay their eggs. They have also evolved a glossy film over their eyes to protect them while swimming. They will congregate in large colonies on Xyrophilio's beaches. We will call these oceanic forms the Docopodia. They can grow up to 7 feet long and live for up to 17 years. However, these forms still have one tie to the land preventing them from becoming fully aquatic. All descendants of the Serpentoforma produce small eggs which need to be laid out of the water. One way to circumvent this is to internalize the eggs. Therefore a new offshoot of the Docopodia may evolve to produce four of five small eggs inside its body birthing them straight into the water. This will allow these forms to become fully aquatic never making landfall in their entire lives. This mode of reproduction is similar to certain shark species on Earth. Now that they are truly aquatic these creatures may specialize for filter feeding. Organisms that use gills to breathe have an upper limit to how big they can get because at a certain size the gills would have to be impractically big to supply enough oxygen to the body. But air-breathing animals can grow much larger as seen in whales. Therefore these forms may be some of the largest creatures to have ever lived, so large in fact, that if they ever did find themselves on land, they would collapse under their own body weight. Their breathing cavities may move to the top of their bodies, functioning as blowholes of sorts. These behemoths will be called the Ocheopodia, with the largest among them growing up to 20 feet long, sporting a maximum lifespan of 30 years. These developments have taken place from the Pyronova eruption to present day, bringing the timeline to about 1.1 billion years into the 4.5 billion year timeline. These clades have evolved to support a thriving ocean ecosystem. In the next episode, we return to the surface, where we see the formation of sprawling rainforests that will cultivate the highest levels of biodiversity ever seen on Verdantara. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share your thoughts. Your suggestions might shape the direction of our future episodes. Until then, keep exploring the wonders of Project Solara.